hello everyone welcome to my channel if you have not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel and today's topic is about finding the number of days for each month between start date and end date and this video is more about thinking programmatically and solving the problems and I would like to share my view of how I learned programming language what I generally do to learn a programming language or anything is first learn certain concepts and then try to solve as many problems as possible with that certain concepts. Now how can we solve a large problem? To solve a large problem we need to break it into small chunks and each of these small parts or chunks we need to write it down what are the problem we are going to solve in these small chunks and then finally arrive at our full solution. Now that is what I am going to do with this video too. Now let's look into an example and understand our problem better. Here I have a start date and end date. I want to find all the dates or days between each month. Say how many days are there in Feb, how many days are there in March and so and so forth. And to do or to solve that problem, I can think of four steps. The first one is expand all the days between the start date and end date. Means I want all the days to be there. Once I expand all the days, what I can simply do is count the days in each month. And then what I can do is I can do an output with each row for month so that everything is more clearer. I just see how many days are there in each month so that I have one row for month. And finally, I want to keep the variables I want to really present and make everything look nicer. So with these four steps which are needed to solve this problem, Let's start with our first step that is expand all the dates from start to end date. Here my start date and end date are here. What I can simply do to expand my start date to end date is to use a do loop and here I am naming my index variable as day. And then in this loop I am saying to start to end and to do an output and then finally end this loop once the end date is reached. What this does is this gives me all the days. As I am just interested in day or days, I am just keeping that particular variable for now. And I am using a format in here just to show the data in more clearer way. Now let's quickly run this step and see our result. In the result you can see that all our days were expanded and the variable name itself is day. Now let us move into the second step that is counting the days in each month. Again the counting days in each month also is little larger problem. First we need to know what is a month in here. So to do that I am creating a new variable month and then I am using month function on day which pulls month. Now let us quickly run this step to see our result. So in here you can see that we have our day and also month and here you can see that once we enter into new month our number of month also changes. Now let's get back into the code. So you can see that I have just plainly picked up the code from the first step and in the second step I just added this piece of code wherein I have set month equal to month of day. Now that we have derived month we need to do the count of days now. To count the days in each month we can use a sum statement. I have made a very detailed video on some statement. 
and link for the same I will give in the description below. If you do not completely understand the sum statement, please have a look into that. Now, sum statement, if we use as it is, there will be a problem. To understand that, let's look into our output data. Here, if I just say count plus one, what it will do is it will start adding one, two, three, four, and then it keeps on adding till the end. But we do not want just that, but we want whenever the month changes, we want it to reset the value back and then start counting from here again as one, two, three, four, five, and then how many ever days it is. To do that, I'm using a logic in here wherein I'm saying if month not equal to lag month means if month value is not equal to its previous value then count equal to zero. I have also made a very detailed video on lag function. If you do not have a complete idea on the lag function please have a look into that. I will give the link for the same in the description below. And now let's try to understand this code wherein I am saying if month not equal to lag month then count equal to zero and then I am having count plus one. So what this does is if you look into the very first observation our month is not equal to previous month because there is no previous month in here so it starts with zero. So this is applied only here and here I have count plus one. Here the count plus one is not a conditional statement so it is applied to all the rows that is count will have the value of one here it will add one more it becomes two then it will add one it will become three and so on and so forth till the month is not changed it will add up and we will get a final number in here. Then our conditional logic kicks in here because in here I am saying that if month is not equal to lag month then count equal to zero. Here the count goes back to zero in here and then our count plus one logic is applied wherein it adds one to each row from here and then it will keep on adding till the month and the previous month are not same and then it goes back to zero in here and then it adds one to each wherein we have our logic of count plus one. Now we can see that how this is happening. Now what I also want you to focus on is I am just keeping this three variables only just to keep things simple. Now let us quickly run this piece of code and see our result. Now you can see that our count is starting with one, two, three and it's adding one for each observation till it gets to the new month and in the new month it starts with one, two, three, four, five and it stops once it comes to the end of the month. Now you can see the result that we have for the month of Feb 22 days. So we actually want to have the final count. We don't want individual counting. So to do that what we need to do is we can't simply write an output like this we need to add a conditional output that is whenever it is at the end of the month we want an output or whenever it is end of our records we want an output. Now that is very simple to write here I have written if day equal to int nx month of day 0 e then output. I have made a very detailed video on how to derive end of the month day. So please have a look into it if you don't understand this completely. So basically what I am saying is if my day is 
end of the month day then please give a output or if my day is equal to end date in this case the end date is 10th may 2022 then do an output so we have done a logic to do an output instead of doing everything output we are conditionally doing output for this particular scenario and also for this particular scenario we wanted an output now let's run our code once i run my code you can see that for month 2 i have 22 days for month 3 i have 31 days now this variable is unimportant so in the next step we can do cleanup now let's do the cleanup and we also here want only month and count so everything about the code is same all i have done is i have changed keep equal to month and count now once i run this you can see that for each month how many days are there we can see that result now if you see here the month is two three four five these are numbers sometimes it's not visually appealing and we may also want to show this as feb march april may that also we can do but let's go back to our earlier code and see what was our result now what i can do is i have a day variable here and i have a month variable here now what i can do is i can drop this variable and i can format this variable in a such a way that it shows february it shows march april may this is little easy to do by using a format now let's go ahead and do our format and then let me add this format for day and then the format i am using is mon name dot now let's quickly run this here you can see for february we have 22 days march we have 31 days and so and so forth and for may we have 10 days so in a way the cleanup also i have done in two different ways depending upon the requirement now what finally i want to say is by adding a logic step by step fashion and increasing our code little by little we were able to finally solve our problem so whenever you see any problem always break it into small pieces or write it down in plain english how you want to solve it and then write code little by little and then try to get to your final solution that's all for this topic if you like this topic please give it a thumbs up share and subscribe thank you